Hello, everybody, and welcome to another in a series of venue live sound workflow videos. Uh, today, we're going to focus on the Wave Sound Grid server integration to S6L, and specifically through the new engine card. We have an SG engine card uh, that goes into any E6L engine and connects to a Wave Sound Grid server with a single Cat5 cable. So the interface really could not be much simpler. Uh, but don't let that fool you because the integration is actually really, really deep to S6L. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's probably as deep an integration to, for, and control capability for Waves plugins that we've seen since the uh, initial launch of Venue with Waves, where we kind of introduced the live sound industry to Waves TDM plugins. So uh, this is pretty exciting for us. We've been working on this for a long time, uh, and it's finally to market. So uh, I'm going to run you through that today. All right, so let's jump right into the uh, operational aspects of using Wave Sound Grid Server. Uh, you know, maybe the first place we sh should start is really just go right to the plugins rack. Um, as you notice, this is the uh, S6L plugins rack, and we can see all the plugin slots there. Uh, I've also set up a number of channels, a number of pathways on the console itself. You can kind of see that in the overhead view here. I've set up a mono input, a stereo input, uh, a mono out stereo return, uh, like an effects loop path, a parallel path. I've got some noise coming into the console, and I've also just added the left right bus here as well. So, as you can kind of see, I've added those uh, to the plugin rack as well. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and add the uh, left right here. We're going to do that as an insert, so right on the main left right bus. And we're just going to start instantiating uh, Waves plugins here. Now, remember in the in Venue land, you're going to see that Waves shell in the plugins list, right? Uh, so, you know, don't be looking for all the individual Waves plugins there. They're going to be under the shell. And then when we get back to our plugins rack, uh, we're actually just going to load that shell here and then have access to all the Waves plugins. So, for instance, if we go to the mono input here, I'm just going to go to mono and effect. And we have the choice of loading either a sound grid rack or a sound grid, uh, excuse me, sound grid sidechain rack. Uh, we're just going to load a regular sound grid rack here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing really here for the stereo. We're just going to load a regular sound grid rack. Uh, for the parallel path, we'll do the same thing, although we're going to do an other here because we want to do it as mono in, stereo out, and we're going to use it as an effect path. So here we're going to do uh, sound grid rack one in, two out. And then, of course, for the insert for the left right bus, here, you know, here's probably a good place here. We'll use a, a, a sound or a sidechain one here. So we'll go to Effect, and we'll go Sound Grid Rack Sidechain for the left-right insert, okay? So we've got four racks here, and the first thing you should pick up on here, of course, is that for each plugin slot in Venue, you get a Sound Grid Rack and eight Waves plugin possibilities for that particular rack. So, um, you know, the, the thing to kind of process here is that you have the possibilities in one Venue slot to have eight uh, Waves plugins, and then another three slots worth of venue plugin as well. And that those could be Waves Rack as well, for that matter. So the plugin possibilities here are pretty grand in terms of what you could possibly do. All right, so I thought I'd start here today, uh, really in this section, just by taking you on a little tour of the Sound Grid Rack, right? Uh, so you see one here that we have pulled up for the mono input. And uh, really one of the things you want to do right away is get some sense of what rack you have here. And you can do that right by the Waves uh, logo, right? So if I click on that, I can get uh, version information here, uh, which is great. I, I can also get website information, phone information, uh, you know, uh, all the stuff, all, a lot of relevant information here. And I, I honestly would probably keep this off the console. I would take a picture of this, screenshot, however you want to do it. Uh, but I would want to have that handy for me at all times. Uh, in addition, we, we can get to the sound grid inventory here. Uh, inventory in this case refers to hardware inventory. So you'll notice if I click on that, up on the MTM becomes uh, the, the uh, sound grid inventory, which tells us uh, what hardware pieces we actually have attached. Uh, you can also uh, reach that inventory on our devices page. So if we go to devices, you'll notice that I've got Waves sound grid rack here in slot six. And if I click on that, I can show inventory in the same way. It's important to note I can also get to the Wave Central here, Launch Wave Central here, if my console is attached to the internet. All right, so let's go back to our plugins rack. I'll close all this out. 
so let's carry on with our little tour here. Obviously, you have input level and output level capabilities in the Wave Sound Grid uh, that you can adjust if you need to do that. Uh, this is where your voices are going to be listed. It's 128 voices, uh, so a lot of possibilities for plugins here. Here's your DSP readout. You can get it, keep a good read on how much DSP you're using. And you know, if you're starting to get close on the rack, you might want to consider just pulling back in a few areas, whatever you need to do. Uh, to the right of the inventory, we, we get an undo redo uh, capability here. And it's important to understand that this is for the rack. Right. This is not just for the plugins. This is for the rack. And at this point, probably as good a time as any to just start instantiating some plugins. All right. So let's go to our first mono input. And here, let's see. Let's go. Um, let's put in a C4. We'll just start putting some plugins in place here. Whoops. I can get the menu thing to work right here. C4. And then we'll follow that up maybe with some EQ, maybe like an EQP1 or something. Yeah, that'd be great. And then let's follow that up with maybe a DS or let's go DS, uh, which I think is in Dyne 2, if I remember right. No, I know it's in Dyne 1. DS -er, and then of course let's go. I don't know, let's go maybe let's put some harmonic stuff on there. Let's go maybe with an Aphex there. Okay, so we've got a mono chain built here for that mono channel now. And as you can see, all of the plugins are in a chain, right? So um, in terms of the stereo one, you know, it'd be exactly the same process. And here's where we can kind of show a little bit of the navigational capabilities here. Uh, if, if we want to just duplicate this in stereo, uh, we could just simply go to the venue window, just like we've always been able to kind of do in venue here and right click on that and say, copy plugin settings, which in this case are the rack settings. Go to the next plugin, which is stereo. Remember we came from mono here and we're going to paste that now. And you can see it's auto automatically taking care of the mono to stereo conversion. It's just made a duplicate of that rack uh, in stereo for us on that stereo channel. So in the same order, etc. cetera. Uh, let's go down to the um, our send and return. Uh, maybe this one will set up a reverb, obviously. Let's go reverb, maybe let's, go, let's use H verb. And we're gonna go mono stereo here. And then maybe after that, let's let's get kind of cool and let's put maybe some limiting slash compression after that. Maybe we'll go, let's put an API 2500 in there. We'll use some of the Steve Lilly White stuff there maybe. So we'll do a little room crush there, so to speak. All right, uh, let's move on to our left, right. Maybe we'll just do an insert here. Uh, let's see, maybe we'll go, um, well, let's put another 2500 on there. That's one of my favorite uh, compressors for sure. Then maybe we'll do some harmonic stuff here. Let's go, let's put the Kramer tape on our left right bus here, and then we'll follow that up. Uh, let's just, uh, let's do this. Go, let's go C6 after that, okay? All right, so there you have a whole bunch of plugins in play. And we'll kind of finish our tour here now. So let's go back to our mono channel. And as I was saying, this is a uh, like a 32 levels of undo redo. So if we make changes and we want to undo them, redo them, kind of get back and forth, maybe we make a mistake, whatever we can get back. In addition, in the rack, you have the ability to do an A and B comparison uh, where you have an A register and a B register. And this applies to the entire rack. So you could actually kind of build two different racks, put them in A and B, and just kind of bounce back and forth and listen to the difference in the racks. Very, very powerful feature uh, in the Wave Sound Grid here. So you do that just simply by clicking on this. As you can see, we've got uh, this rack built into register A. We don't have anything in register B yet, which takes us right to this section here. This is a way of copying settings from A to B, so you can create a, uh, an AB point to uh, uh, to compare. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that there. And now you can notice that I've got both A and B the same. I can set up A one way, go to B and just compare it, uh, compare it uh, back and forth. So again, very, very powerful kind of thing. Uh, here you have uh, navigation to uh, bounce through presets. And again, these are rack presets. So if you have different racks built and you want to try them on a given input, you can just literally scroll through them here and get back to them. Okay, so uh, pretty cool stuff. All right, so I'm gonna copy this again and put it back. All right, in terms of the load save section here, remember this is the waves environment here. So you're actually loading or saving entire racks here. Uh, so uh, 
you know, just keep in mind there are two different levels of this, right? We're going to load and save entire racks and presets, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. And then we can also load and, and save individual presets down here. Notice the similarity in the window here. This one is dealing specifically with uh, the plugin presets. This is dealing specifically with the mono pre or the uh, the rack presets. Excuse me. We can also have some navigation here up in the venue window. If we go here, we can. Uh, do this uh, repatch here as opposed to having to do it here. Uh, same with the insert. If you notice, we get down to the side chain rack. Um, we can actually choose the side chain sources here uh, that we might want to side chain into this particular uh, particular plugin as well. All right. Uh, we get some listing of snapshots here again, which we'll cover here in just a few minutes. All right. So that's kind of the uh, the navigation of the windows. Etc. We can do all of the normal drag and drop that we want to do uh, normally, I, I, as you guys have been able to do in Wave Sound Grid before. If we drag one unit up, maybe we want to put that uh, Apex before the DSer. It's just as simple as that, and we've actually changed the signal flow there. In terms of rack layout, remember uh, when we're in Venue Rack, we can always drag and drop uh, to move or actually create a duplicate here as well. Uh, maybe we want to drag and drop and say, well, just, just copy that plug in here and we create a duplicate there, right, that we can use on anything else. Okay. All right. So the next thing I want to cover here really quickly while I have a little bit of time in this particular chapter is just how to control these plugins. So let's go, uh, maybe let's go up here. Yeah, let's just start there in the, uh, in the C4. So I've got a number of inputs here. Uh, if I were to select one of them, uh, if you notice in the overhead here, the plugin comes right up available on the CKM, on the knob modules as, uh, as they're known. And if you pick, if you kind of look at it closely here, you can see that the layout of the encoders is actually very similar to the visual layout in the plugin itself, right? So as we get to, for instance, gain here, you know, here's the different gains. So you can see it's all kind of laid out very, very similar. And if we don't get to all the controls, we can actually scroll. So take a look at the plugin now, and you'll notice that some of the uh, controls are outlined in red. That's what's currently available to you on the encoders right now uh, to be able to manipulate them. If I use this little scrolling system right next to the plugins button, I can go to the next page. So you'll notice that now there's a different set of red outlines and those correlate to this set of encoders here. If I scroll back, then I go back to the other controls. So we can actually get to all of the controls on a given plugin uh, for uh, or with the encoders. All right. And of course, that applies for everything in the rack. As we go to the next plugin, we've tried to logically lay these out to where it looks very similar to the actual plugin to try to keep you connected uh, to the screen here. So uh, nice way to work here. And really, one of the really beautiful things about S6L, remember, is that we can have multiple local selection, right, where we can work on multiple things at one time. So for instance, if I had these inputs spread out a little bit, where I have my mono input here, my stereo input here, my mains, and uh, effects return, etc. Remember the concept of local selection here. I can locally select one here and be working on it here. I can locally select this channel and be working on its plugin here. I can locally select here and be working on this plugin here. So you have three areas of work here. And remember, anything that's in the center section, if I select it, it moves over to the right hand knob module. All right. So you can get to a lot of stuff really, really quickly here and navigate that very, very fluently. So um, that probably just about covers it for operation and navigation. That should get you around the, the rack pretty, uh, pretty effectively, I think. Um, great operating it on the console. So much fun as opposed to having to always reach for a mouse and do it. I love being able to do it on the console just like we did in the analog days, right? So, uh, all right. So we'll move on to um, actually the filing system next. Remember, I mentioned earlier we have some overlap in the filing system where there's a little bit of redundancy where you kind of do the same thing, whether you're doing it in the waves architecture or you're doing it in the venue architecture, but it's really effective either way. OK, so we'll move on to file structure. All right, in this segment, I'm going to talk to you about presets. And remember, in the Wave Sound Grid environment, we need to worry about not only uh, individual plugin presets, but also rack presets, right? We can have the entire rack stored as a preset. So let's jump over to the plugin window and we'll get you started on this. All right, so uh, we're back at this mono input that I have here. And 
uh, the C4 is up, which is fine. We can just use that as a place to show how this works. Uh, so remember, this segment uh, above the actual plugin itself is almost identical to the one that I showed you about the rack, right? That guy up there. Same sort of functionality here. So only here we're going to be talking about individual plugin presets, not the entire rack presets. So to show this, I'm just going to hit the load button and we can kind of see all the factory presets that we have loaded here uh, or available to us here, I should say. Uh, so I'll just going to pick one. Uh, I'll pick something like this. All right. So let's just say we had that on the channel and we made some sort of alteration to it. We said, OK, well, that's really what I want mine to to look and sound like. And we're going to save that preset now. We might want to use it again somewhere. So oh, I'm going to go up to uh, the save button here on the individual preset or individual plugin and hit save. And we're going to save this to a new file. So it's going to take you out to a Windows type desktop here and uh, we need to create a place where we can start saving all of these Waves presets. So I'm going to just choose User Data. And as you can see, it's a, a typical Windows kind of file structure here. I'm just going to right click within here and create a new folder. All right. And I'm going to call it SCOBY Waves Presets. OK. All right. And then we're going to open that up. And then if you notice down here in the file name, uh, even, even though it calls it C4 Setups kind of dot uh, XPS, that's their file structure. This really is kind of more of, of a folder than anything. So I'm just going to put a prefix on that that is called SCOBY as well. And that way I'll be able to recognize my presets here. So this is our C4 setups. And, uh, you know, you can even give this a name if you want, but I'm going to just do this. Here you're going to name the actual preset if you uh, want to call it something. So obviously this is an edit of a base comp DSer kind of thing. So Maybe I'll just, uh, you know, maybe I'll put an RS in front of it or something, just something to indicate that I know that it's mine and go OK. So now if we go and load some other preset here, oops, I keep going up there. Let's do it here. Let's go load something completely different. And then we want to load back our, uh, our preset that we saved. We go to load. And sure enough, if we look up here in the menu now, we see SCOBY S or C4 setups. This is going to be all the C4s that I ever save. And then I see that uh, preset that I used or that I saved, right? So I'm going to click on that. And sure enough, we go right back where it was. All right. So that's individual presets. That's how we save individual presets in Waves uh, on Venue. Now, if we want to ch save the entire channel strip, there are two ways to do this. And I'm going to give you my recommendation on how to do it here. We can, of course, go here and use the Waves system for loading and saving folder presets. But what I'm going to actually suggest to you is that you go to our folder structure in Venue to do this. All right. So if you notice up here, remember, it, for you guys that are familiar with Venue, if we click on the um, folder here, we have a choice of uh, factory presets, user presets, or a folder that I've already created called SCOBY presets. So we're going to go here and now we're going to create new and we're creating the entire channel strip here. So uh, we're going to call this uh, mono mono base uh, channel or something along those lines. OK, because it remember it's saving the entire strip here. OK, so I've saved that now and I go OK. And now it's saved all of these settings in one go in that channel strip. All right. So I can come back and load that. So if I were to go and make a bunch of changes here, a bunch of crazy changes here, a bunch of crazy changes here, let's do it, just do a bunch of it and then go back up to this and click on it. You'll notice that it takes me right back where I was uh, previously. It just gets me right back to that that channel strip. All right. So in the venue filing system, you can save up to 999 different uh, presets within a folder. So lots of storage possibilities there. Uh, a lot of aud audition possibilities there. If you were to go here and save numerous ones of these, let's, uh, let's just do that for the exercise of it. I'll get out of this. We've saved that one. I'll just do it here so you can kind of see this rapidly. Do that and uh, go here and create new uh, mono base base channel channel. Oops, if I can spell two. Okay, so now that we've done that, I can actually go here and just audition back and forth, and I can do this for as many presets as I have sitting there, right? And of course, if I just cancel out of that, then it'll go right back to the original one. So 
uh, one more time just to show you that I'll open that go to the different auditions that I want here and then go back here and cancel and it'll take me right back where I started uh, if you if you want to keep the one you're auditioning then you just go okay and you're out of it and you're in the new channel okay so easy peasy really good stuff there uh, for uh, using preset racks and um, individual plug-in presets okay and of course you can offload these if you need to do it uh, in our filing system you have to go to the transfer key you have to have your USB key in uh, we would go to presets here so uh, for transfer so I if I wanted to transfer off all of my presets and this is everything on the console that is under that SCOBY uh, heading I would just do this make sure my USB key is in which it is here and then transfer over it now the only thing that has gone over is all of those rack presets right so um, that will take those individual big racks over if I want to get down to the individual level and just take some some of individual plug-in presets uh, with me and then I got to go back to that Windows environment so let's go back to uh, let's go back to load and we'll just go open preset file just to get back to this area here and there I would kind of navigate back to the uh, this area here where I got all of my presets so if I wanted I can go get individuals here or I can take the entire folder over and notice that removable disk that's that USB key that I had in so I can literally just drag over to this and voila it will be there so there's my presets on that USB key now as waves files all right so pretty easy stuff there Let's move on to the next section. Next thing we're going to cover is snapshots. We're going to go into uh, using Waves plugins with snapshots uh, and get these racks kind of recallable stuff. I, I think you're really going to like this. This is really, really fun stuff uh, uh, for Waves and Venue. All right, we'll see you for snapshots here. All right, in this section, we're going to cover snapshots and specifically how to get your Wave Sound Grid plugins to follow along with your console snapshot recalls, right? So before we go there, I, I think it's probably worth taking just a second uh, to discuss snapshots in Venue and kind of do a really kind of high level overview of how it actually works so we can set the right expectation getting to the plugins, okay? So the first thing you need to understand about Venue snapshot architecture is that it works on a store all recall filtered process okay meaning if i hit the store button every time i hit the store button it's going to store everything on the console in the currently loaded snapshot and when i hit recall i'm only going to recall a filtered set of that store meaning uh, particular channels or particular parameters right and that process of choosing what is going to come up in that recall is called scoping the snapshot all right, so let's move to the snapshot window and we'll take a look at how this impacts plugins and etc. All right, so we go to the snapshots window here, and as you can see, uh, there are no snapshots created. We, we're going to need to create a new snapshot to get the process underway, so let's do that. And as you can see, the window kind of jumps to life with a lot of red here, and red is the indicator of uh, something being scoped in this snapshot window. So as you can see here, when we create a new snapshot, all Faders are scoped, and this is our primary snapshot, right? The first one we've created. All channels are scoped, meaning all input process or input channels and output channels, uh, and only two of the parameters are scoped. So, if we were to store this, let's go ahead and store it, and then we were to recall it, it would recall the existing settings where we see them. Uh, for faders and mutes. Even though there's EQ, dynamics, and all the other things in that, it would only recall the fader and the mutes, right? And we can add more things to that. If we wanted to recall EQ out of that or dynamics, we would just add it to the scope and that would be subject to the recall now. All right, so how does this impact plugins? Well, if you'll notice, there's a little gold plugins tab here. There's a couple of tabs here, one for MIDI and one for plugins. And this window, when that uh, tab is highlighted, shows you what plugins are added to the snapshot or in that snapshot. And as you can see, there are none in there right now. And that's kind of the point of this exercise is to, is to show you that the way you scope plugins is to add them to the snapshot. All right, so for the uh, sake of this exercise, I'm going to take all the scoping out right now. So I'm just going to go, there are no faders, no parameters scoped here, and we're going to add some plugins to this uh, snapshot. All right, so there's actually a little way to cover up the par uh, parameter scope there, 
and we're going to add some plugins here. And you can do this on a per plugin basis if you want. You know, you may not necessarily want all of your plugins to be recalling with every snapshot. So, uh, in this case, though, we've only created four plugins uh, in the in this little session here. So I'm just going to add them all. All right. So there's the four plugins that we've created. These are now added to this this snapshot here, which we're going to go ahead and retitle just so we can keep track of things here. Song one. All right, so now when I recall that snapshot, it's going to recall the settings that are stored uh, or that are on those plugins right now, right? So for instance, if I were to go to those plugins and make a change and then hit recall, you can see that the plugin comes back to where that stored data is, okay? So we, we've obviously created a song here. Maybe this is going to be a music thing we're mixing. Uh, you know, maybe it's a set list of songs, whatever. And usually in, so, in a music mixing situation, uh, you know, you're going to create one good snapshot, uh, get things kind of laid out, get things added to the snapshot that you want, and then you're going to create duplicates of that and create derivatives of it as you move along into your set when you're creating your, all your snapshots. So in that situation, what you're going to want to do is choose duplicate, right? Not new. You're going to want to choose duplicate. And we're going to make this song too and recall it. And as you can see, the, the plugins have come along with it. Uh, now, it's probably worth mentioning at this point, we have plugins scoped here as well. Now, if you guys understand our parameter scoping area, as I roll my mouse over here, you can see there's some data down in the lower left hand corner that describes what that scope does. I'm going to roll it over plugins so we can read what happens down there. And it says, OK, plugins are scoped. So control settings and in circuit state and routing for the selected plugins in the plugin list above. So that's the plugins in that particular window. OK, so uh, let's carry on. We'll duplicate out a couple more snapshots here. We'll, maybe we'll go for a four song set list. Nice short show for us today. OK, and as you can see, all of those plugins are in all of those snapshots, right? OK, so what happens if we want to create a new snapshot? Maybe we're, we're going to move uh, maybe to a different band and we're going to use snapshots to do that. Or maybe we're in a corporate event or something where the snapshots aren't necessarily going to be a derivative of each other. We're going to move to a completely new event. Well, in that situation, we would create a new snapshot. And the reason I bring this up is that you, oops, hang on, let me get that out of there. We would want, uh, we need to, understand here is that uh, it doesn't carry the uh, plugins along with it. Even though the scope is still there, it doesn't have any plugins added to it, right? So be careful there. You know, make sure you want to create new or duplicate. You understand the differences in those two things, okay? So let's go back and let's talk about how we edit and kind of get things going in our plugin world here as well. So here we have song one. Uh, let's say I make an a change to that plugin, and I think maybe I'm mixing along in my song, and I make that plugin change, and I think, ooh, wow. Okay, well, I, I don't really want to store over where I'm at on the console right now, but I do want to save that plugin setting into this snapshot. How do I how do I update this plugin in the snapshot? Well, there are a couple of different ways you can do it. One is you can do it right from this window by going over here where the red S is. And, and that's another indicator of scope there. That is telling you that this wave sound grid rack in slot one here is scoped into the current snapshot. So if I drop down the uh, menu here, I can say update the plugin in snapshot one. And if I do that, I've only updated that plugin setting. Actually, I should say that plugin rack setting for wave sound grid in the current snapshot. And this is an important distinction that we need to touch on right here is that when I update this slot for the snapshot, I'm updating all of these plugins in there, right? I can't do it on a per plugin basis here. It has to be the entire rack that gets updated in the snapshot, okay? So if you'll notice now, if I go through my snapshots, and you can look down in the bottom uh, center of this screen to see which snapshot I'm on, we've stored that, uh, we've updated that plugin in snapshot one. Snapshot two, three, and four are all of our previous settings, right? So we've just updated that, and we didn't really have to store over anything on the console. We only updated the plugin. All right, so the next situation would be like, well, okay, what if I take that setting now and I think, 
okay, I've already kind of created a lot of my snapshots, but I really like this setting. I want to move this plugin setting to all the rest of the snapshots or maybe just a selected few snapshots. Well, it's a similar process, right? So if I like this setting and I want to put it, maybe I want to put this in snapshot three, then I got to go back to the snapshots window and highlight snapshot three and one, go back and now update plugin in selected snapshots here. Or I can go back here and go update plugin in selected snapshots here. Either way, it's the same move. It's just two different locations. So I'll do it here. And now if we go back to our plugins window and we are on our snapshot one, two, three, and four, right? So now we have that same setting there. If we want it to go everywhere, then we've got to actually just uh, select all of the snapshots we want it to go. And we go update plugin in selected snapshots, right? And now when we recall snapshots, notice they're all there in all four. All right, that's Wave Sound Grid plugins and snapshots. We'll move on to the next section. All right, in this section, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about latency. And uh, as we all know, in digital consoles, uh, when we start using third party plugins or outboard gear, there is going to be a latency that we need to manage and make sure that we understand uh, so that we keep our sources aligned, especially so when we're mixing music, right, where we might have multiple microphones on one thing or, you know, we want to really make sure all of the inputs are exiting the console at the same time. You know, that's a big piece of that in terms of mixing music. So we want to be able to manage latency. And in uh, this situation where we're using third party plugins, especially with Wave Sound Grid, remember, we're going to go out of the console to a processing computer and come back. Uh, and then we're also going to go out to from our mix engine to our HDX card and back. So there's a couple of path links that we've got to contend with here and understand what's happening. So let's go to the plugins window. I'll kind of give you a tour of how we find these times and then give you some tips and maybe show you some ways to manage it here. So here's our uh, here's our rack again. Remember, we, we still have our same input set up here. We have our mono input, our stereo input our send and effects return and a, and a mains left right that also have plugins on it right that's our four plugin slots here so if we go to uh, the mono channel let's just take a look at the mono channel we see our plugins here remember the stereo channel is exactly the same layout right now but if we look at the mono channel and we right click on one of the uh, drop down menus we can see the latency for that plugin uh, you can see that for the c4 it is 1.3 milliseconds uh, we also get the total rack latency. And by rack latency here, it's talking about this individual rack, the accounting for these eight slots within that one venue plugin slot, right? And that is 3.1 milliseconds or 298 samples. But in venue, that's not the entire story. If we want to go uh, to the inputs page now and we look at... Um, we want to look at that path link back and forth to the HDX card as well, because we have to account for that here. So if we right click near inserts, we can see that that's 458 samples, 458 samples in total. That includes the wave sound grid, grid rack there. All right. So we, we need, now that we know that time, uh, you know, we just use that piece of information as we might need to use it. Uh, for instance, maybe if we're on a drum kit or something and we have uh, let's just take an example where we might put a lot of process and we might do a lot of processing on the snare top mic, but not necessarily on the snare bottom or the overheads. Well, if we if we increase the, the through throughput of that snare top microphone, we really want to delay the other microphones used on the kit back to that snare top again and keep them all in alignment. Again, we kind of want them all to exit the console at the same time, just as they would in analog. Right. So. Uh, that time is important and, and being able to manage it uh, properly is important. So let's measure it. Uh, for you guys that come to my mixing clinics and uh, you know have, have worked with me out in the field, you know I'm a big proponent of using FFT for this, uh, have been for many years. It is your secret weapon on a digital console in terms of measuring and understanding what's going on latency wise on your desk. Today we're going to use Smart to do that. So I've just set it up, uh, I've just put Smart right across the left right bus. Uh, any signals we want to measure, we're just going to pan to the left side. The right side is going to be the measurement 
or I mean the reference. So I've got a noise channel here that is panned to the right. That's the reference. And we'll just measure these other channels to see what their throughput is. And then if we want to make some adjustment, we can. All right, so uh, if you pull up smart here, I'll pull up the smart window and I'm going to turn on the mono input. And as you can see, we need to do a delay locator on the computer to get the time. So we're going to do that. And there you go, 4.7 milliseconds, 4.77 milliseconds all the way through the left right bus there. And remember, there are additional plugins on the left right bus there as well. So I'm going to insert that time and you see our flat phase response, right? So remember our stereo channel, I'm going to mute the mono channel now, our stereo channel has the exact same plugins on it, so I would expect it to be the same throughput time. So let's turn it on and sure enough, flat response there. Now what happens if we, if we have a different path link there that we want to add together? Maybe we got a couple of different path links going on on a drum kit and we want to realign those things. How do we do that? Well, uh, let's, let's kind, of, uh, kind of mock that up here. Let's go to the stereo channel. And let's just change one of the plugins. Let's just make the, uh, let's change the Puig Tech for a 558 for an, uh, uh, for an API. And now let's measure that. And as you can see, it's a different throughput time now, right? Matter of fact, I would bet that it's getting there a little earlier. Yeah, because this is a zero latency plugin. So you can see our, our rack latency has dropped down on that stereo channel. So we're going to want to add some to delay to that to get it back to that 4.77 number, right? So the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to add some delay to this stereo channel. So I'm going to put its delay in place. Uh, and we want to, you know, for doing this, you really want to get your delay increments down to the sample level. So I'm going to go to miscellaneous here. And sure enough, yeah, I'm in samples. Uh, so we're going to go back to that input now. And I'm going to just start adding some delay to that. And you will see it come right into play here. Oops, probably a bit much there, a bit much there. I'm going to have to put in some time on my own here. I'm going to guess about 150 there, maybe 170. There we go. So I had to add 170 samples to that stereo input to get back to a flat, uh, a flat response there in terms of phase, right? So now I know that those two inputs, even though they have different path links on their insert, are actually going to exit the console at exactly the same time, right? So this is an important concept for mixing music where you have a lot of uh, similar things. Like I said earlier, you want to make sure all your inputs are actually exiting the console at the same time. And hopefully you can keep that latency relatively low so that it doesn't impact what you're doing acoustically in the room, right? Okay, well, that is a latency. That is how we manage it in venue land and in conjunction with Wave Sound Grid. Uh, the next little place we're going to stop is importing legacy show files. We're going to take some, I'm going to pull up a show file maybe from 2012, 2010, somewhere around there, and we'll load that on the console that already has Waves plugins in it, and let's see how that loads, okay? All right, we'll be back with that in just a second. One of the really great features of the Wave Sound Grid integration to S6L is the ability now to load legacy show files onto S6L that included Waves plugins. And by that I mean D Show, uh, Show Files, Profile, Mix Rack, SC48, any one of those uh, consoles that created show files that used Waves TDM can now be loaded on S6L and have the Wave Sound Grid populated with those legacy plugins. Uh, and their settings that you used in those previous show files. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I, I'll give you an example of that. I'm going to try to show it to you here. Uh, I've got some show files from that era uh, that I've used in the past and, and I'm going to load here. So if we move over to the uh, screen, you can kind of see that I have a show file. Uh, looks like from 2012 uh, in London, funny enough. And I, I've already transferred it over into, the, into a, a folder that I've created on uh, the system today. And now we're going to load that show file. So let's get there. Legacy and London. Over in the right hand side, of course, you see the source file information. This is all the particulars about that source file, what it was created on, etc. We're going to go into config mode and just hit load and off we go. Now we're going to get a couple of quick prompts here. One is kind of uh, talking about the lack of I.O. on the engine, right? We don't have I.O. on the E6 engines. 
uh, where we did have I.O. on the engines in the legacy uh, systems. And this is just saying you're going to have to account for that I.O. patches or those I.O. patches in your new show file. So I'm going to keep that information. And then, of course, we have some others talking about uh, bus insert points and the MADI patching that we currently have on, which is not a big deal here. All right, so we move over to the plug-in rack. Uh, I'm going to go back into config mode here, and let's just have a look. So uh, don't be spooked by the yellow triangles here. Those are plugins that were that existed in TDM that no longer exist in AXDSP. Uh, what we're really more concerned about here is the Waves plugins. And as you can see, there's a whole host of Waves sound grids that have been created where those Waves plugins were in the previous show file. All right, so we're going to navigate down to uh, a few of these places to see what they have going on here. It looks like, uh, let's see, what do we got in drum room here? Oh, we, I, that was some equalization that I was doing on a drum crush. Uh, let's see, some H delay for Mike Campbell solos. You know, where we want to go here really, though, is let's go down to the keyboards here. I know in the Wurlitzer, yeah, here we go. So on the Wurlitzer, I actually did an insert chain. Uh, where I had three plugins involved. I had a, um, uh, looks like a, well, I can't even remember now. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's H delay, right? H delay, and then a stereo, uh, Iser, a stereo spreader, and then a reverb that I had balanced, uh, you know, so kind of doing a mixed uh, wet dry blend on there to create some of these really tight rooms for the Wurlitzer. So, you know, the thing to take note of here is that it's created a wave sound grid rack for each one of those slots, right? Or each one of those plugins. Uh, so you have one plugin in an eight rack or eight slot rack for each venue slot, which will work just fine. And the reason we kind of do that is so we, we maintain your snapshot information. If you look here on the screen, you can see that two of those plugins in that insert chain are actually being addressed by snapshots. So um, it's the first one and the third one. So like I said, we can just leave it just like this. It will work just fine. Uh, it, you know, it feels inefficient to kind of use a rack just for one plugin, but hey, that's the way it worked out here. If we wanted, if we get pinched for venue slots and we wanted to consolidate that, say we wanted to take uh, and consolidate that chain into one wave sound grid rack, we can actually do that. It takes just a little bit of work if you want to maintain your snapshot information in it, but it absolutely can be done. So here's the way we, way we would do that. We would go, or at least this is the way I would suggest that you do it. You would go to the, uh, the rack in the first slot, and then we're going to copy these plugins into that, into that rack. But we're actually going to keep these other plugins until we get the snapshot information moved over to it. Okay, so we look something like this. If I can do this right here, we're going to go here and we are going to copy this plugin. And then we're going to go back up to this slot and go here and paste that one. And then we're going to do the same thing for the reverb where we're going to copy this. And then we're going to go back to that slot, that first slot and paste it. So now we've recreated that chain in that first plugin slot. Now we don't want to kind of move from here yet because we don't want to lose this information down here in the snapshot. So as it sits right now, I'm just going to store this in this first snapshot of the show here. And the important part here now is that we want to update this first slot in all of our snapshots. So I'm going to go here and, and just to save a little time, I'm just going to select all of these snapshots. And then I'm going to go back there and update I'm going to actually add that plugin to all those selected snapshots and update it as well. All right. So now when we go from snapshot to snapshot, you'll see, oops, let me get back here. Let's go to this guy and recall him. So now you'll see as I go snapshot to snapshot, that chain is now there in all of those snapshots. So now how do we get our snapshot information? into those other snapshots, right? Well, again, it's going to be kind of a copy paste, right? As we recall a snapshot here, we're going to go to the, the plugin that's got the snapshot information. We're going to copy it. And then we're going to go to the uh, place where we've rechained and paste it, right? So now that new, that 
snapshotted preset is in our new position in the rack, all right? So it'll be a little time consuming for you to do it, but at least you've got all that information. That is certainly much easier than recreating the plugins from the get-go, all right? So as you can see, all of it came right across great. If you look across the console, I've got my show file up. All the, all the channels have come up just exactly like I had them in my D-Show system when I was using it, along with my Waves plugins, all right? All right, that's going to do it for the Waves Sound Grid tutorial with S6L. I uh, hope you guys have great luck with this. Please get out in the world and use it. Bring those old show files in, put them on S6L, and get to work on this new console. Uh, we really want you guys working on it out in the field. Uh, if you want more information on Waves or S6L, please go to the Avid website or the Waves website and pick up more information on either of these products. All right, we'll see you guys. Make it sound good out there. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.